plasma antenna. For starters, what is a plasma antenna? A plasma antenna is a type of radio antenna currently in development in which plasma is used instead of the metal elements of a traditional antenna. A plasma antenna can be used for both transmission and reception. Although plasma antennas have only become practical in recent years, the idea is not new. A patent for an antenna using the concept was granted to J. Hettinger in 1919. Basically, a plasma antenna is a type of antenna but different from the, from the traditional antenna because it uses plasma as its energy source or rather plasma as its medium. Early practical examples of the technology used discharge tubes to contain the plasma and are referred to as ionized gas plasma antennas. Ionized gas plasma antennas can be turned on and off and are good for stealth and resistance to electronic warfare and cyber attacks. Ionized gas plasma antennas can be nested such that the higher frequency plasma antennas are placed inside lower frequency plasma antennas. Higher frequency ionized gas plasma antenna arrays can transmit and receive through lower frequency ionized gas plasma antenna arrays. This means that the ionized gas plasma antennas can be co-located and ionized gas plasma antenna arrays can be stacked. Ionized gas plasma antennas can eliminate or reduce co-site interference. Smart ionized gas plasma antennas use plasma physics to shape and steer the antenna beams without the need of phased arrays. Satellite signals can be steered or focused in the reflective or refractive modes using banks of plasma tubes, making unique ionized gas plasma ionized gas satellite plasma antennas. The thermal noise of ionized gas plasma antennas is, is less than in the corresponding metal antennas at the higher frequencies. Solid state plasma antennas, also known as plasma silicon antennas, with steerable directional functionality, can be manufactured using standard silicon chip fabrication techniques are now also in development. Plasma silicon antennas are candidates for use in YGIG, the planned enhancement to Wi-Fi, and have other potential applications for example in reducing the cost of vehicle mounted rad radar collision avoidance systems. In an ionized gas plasma antenna, a gas is ionized to create a plasma. Unlike gases, plasmas have very high electrical conductivity. So it is possible for radio frequency signals to travel through them so that they act as a driven element such as a dipole antenna to radiate radio waves or to receive them. Alternatively, the plasma can be used as a reflector or a lens to guide and focus radio waves from another source. Plasma is a recurring element of matter. in which it has seen application like this, a plasma antenna. As we know it, plasma is made up of charged particles which makes it a high, which makes it a conductor of electricity. So that as explained here, Radio frequency signals can can travel can travel through them or can, or it can receive them, making it a flexible making it a flexible antenna. Solid state antennas differ in that the plasma is created from electrons generated by activating thousands of diodes on a silicon chip. In this section. The the solid state antennas is not like an ionized gas plasma antenna because in an ionized gas plasma antenna it uses a ionized gas 
while in a solid state antenna it uses plasma that is created from electrons generated by activating thousands of diodes on a silicon chip quiz time question number one what is a plasma antenna's key feature a it emits light b it uses plasma to transmit and receive signals c it is the least used antenna d it is identical to a lead lamp or led lamp the answer is b it uses plasma to transmit and receive signals primarily these plasma antennas have been a head turner especially to the military as it is resistant to hacking making it a perfect candidate for use in electronic warfare especially in especially in radio technology that is needed from time to time question number two which of the following statements is true a it uses plasma that is obtained from human bodies b it uses plasma recreated from a laboratory in order for it to work c the plasma antenna does not use discharge tubes d modern plasma antennas use ionized gas plasma the answer is d plasma antennas use ionized gas plasma ionized gas plasma antennas can be turned on and off and are good for stealth and resistance to electronic warfare and cyber attacks question number three which states which statements are true in regards to plasma antennas a Metal issue in antennas are not prone to hacking than plasma antennas. B. Metal issue antennas are prone to hacking than plasma antennas. C. The standard antenna has less thermal noise than that of a plasma antenna at higher frequencies. D. Plasma antennas, even at higher frequencies, has less thermal noise than that of a standard issue metal antenna. And the answer is both B and D. The statements above are true. Plasma antennas beat standard issue antennas when it comes to hack resistance and thermal noise. Question number 4. What are the characteristics of a plasma antenna? A. It uses discharge tubes for the plasma to be contained. B. It uses expensive materials in order to be made. C. It is a candidate for use in the planned upgrade for Wi-Fi. D. It has a slow data exchange rate. And the answer is both A and C. The plasma antenna is a state-of-the-art technology that is hypothesized by J. Hittinger in 1919. Which of the following is not true in regards to plasma antennas? A. Plasma antennas are capable of very fast data rates. B. In order to transmit using a plasma antenna, the data is carried through the discharge tube as radio frequency. Since in theory, Plasma has very high conductance. C. Plasma antennas use silicon chip fabrication or in order to manufacture solid state ones. D. Plasma antennas cannot be tuned and refigured for frequency, direction, bandwidth, gain, and beam width. And the answer is D. Plasma antennas cannot be tuned and refigured for frequency, direction, bandwidth, gain, and beam width. They are one of the most flexible antennas around. That is why multiple of them is not necessary. One, in, one is enough for all. You see, plasma antennas are, are almost perfect as an antenna. Because if you cannot, if you cannot detect a signal or a radio wave, you can just tune it unlike other radio free unlike uh, unlike other antennas you need to which have their own limitations the plasma antennas can be refigured not just for frequency it can also be redirected to another direction it can it can also change bandwidths gain and beam width Next is, 
What are the advantages of a plasma antenna? Plasma antennas possess a number of advantages over metal antennas including as soon as the plasma generator is switched off, the plasma returns to a non-conductive gas and therefore becomes effectively invisible to radar. As said earlier, it can be turned on and off so that it can be so that it can pass through the radar of a for example a electronic attack you can turn them off if they are close or if someone is attempting to hack the plasma antenna then turn them on again if they are if the hacking is not successful or rather if the hack if the hacker cannot detect the system at all next they can be dynam dynamically tuned and refigured for frequency direction bandwidth gain and beef beam width so replacing the need for multiple antennas they are resistant to electronic warfare at satellite frequencies, they exhibit much less thermal noise and are capable of faster data rates, which makes it a perfect candidate for YGIG, which we will discuss later on. Next is disadvantages. The semiconductor version of the plasma antenna is limited to high frequencies, which makes certain applications difficult. For example, YGIG routers operating at 60 GHz cannot penetrate walls, which means... For example, if YGIG is already revolutional or rather it has it has been popular and you bu and you buy a YGIG router for from a internet service provider for example Converge they provide they provide uh, they provide cheap data plans and um, at a faster internet speed which makes it a better choice than the other internet service providers example you you bought a y gig from converge and you install it in your room other users will connect to your wi-fi or y gig rather cannot detect a signal from the y gig unless they are inside your room that is a that is just one of its disadvantages it is limited to a room the ionizer next is the ionizer increases power consumption more energy is required to ionize the gases or to make the silicon chips release electrons therefore plasma antennas actually use more power than normal antennas next is plasma volumes must be stable and repeatable when a gas is ionized not at all 100% of the gas will ionize to become plasma. With silicon chips, it is reasonable to say that the amount of electrons released by the silicon when heated or charged will vary from time to time. Thus, it is imperative that the volume of plasma generated each time should be the same. The amount of plasma existing during a transmission or reception should also be sta the stable and, and not fluctuate. Only then will the electromagnetic waves transmitted be stable. Here is an example of a ionized gas plasma antenna. Here we see the discharge tube, the shielding box, the RF port, the insulated box, ground, frequency modulation, and the switch. So far, the plasma antenna is still on the experimental phase. As such, it is yet 
it, it, it is not yet that popular but not that odd enough to be overlooked by other types if they are proven and tested to be better than the other models then we, then we might be getting the y gig soon what is y gig y gig alternatively known as 60 gigahertz wi-fi it refers to a set of 60 gigahertz wireless network protocols it includes the current IEEE 802.11AD standard and also the upcoming IEEE 802.11AY standard. The YGIG specification allows devices to communicate without wires at multi-gigabit speeds. It enables high-performance wireless data display and audio applications that supplement the capabilities of previous wireless LAN devices or local area network devices. YGIG tri-band enabled devices which operate in the 2.4, 5, and 60 gigahertz bands deliver data transfer rates up to 7 gigabits per second for 11 AD, about as fast as an 8-band 802.11 AC transmission, and more than 11 times as fast than the highest 802.11 N rate, while maintaining compatibility with existing Wi-Fi devices, the, the 60 GHz millimeter wave signal cannot typically penetrate walls, but can propagate by reflection from walls, ceilings, floors, and objects using beam forming built into the Y gig system. When roaming, when roaming away from the main room, the protocol can switch to make use of the other lower bands at a much lower rate, both of which can propagate through walls. The name YGIG comes from Wireless Gigabyte Alliance, the original association being formed to promote the adoption of IEEE 802.11 AD. However, it is now certified by Wi-Fi Alliance. It is not surprising anymore if there are already military prototypes of these antennas due to its nature of being resistant to electronic warfare. They are a better alternative to the vintage radio antennas. but they are still reliable also. In terms of cost efficiency, the plasma antenna is really costly because it uses expensive materials. But that was before. Now, a new plasma antenna developed by the, a new plasma antenna developed plasma antennas of Winchester, UK made it better due to its nature being reliant to existing low cost manufacturing techniques for silicon chips. The PA the PSI-AN is the new candidate for innovation. There are two types of plasma antenna. Semiconductor or solid state antennas such as PSI-AN and gas antennas. Both could fit the bill but solid state antennas are favored as they are more compact and no moving parts and have no moving parts. Plasma silicon antennas or PSI-AN PSI-AN consists of thousands of diodes on a silicon chip. When activated, each diode generates a cloud of electrons or the plasma. At a high enough electron density, each cloud reflects high frequency radio waves like a mirror. By selectively activating diodes, the shape of the reflecting area can be changed to focus and steer a beam of radio waves. This beam forming capability makes the antennas crucial to ultra-fast wireless applications because they can focus a stream of high-frequency radio waves that could quickly dissipate using normal antennas. Below is an example of a solid-state plasma antenna. Solid-state antennas differ in that the plasma is created from electrons by activating thousands of diodes in a silicon chip. Conclusion Is plasma antenna the future of le electronics? Who knows? Only innovation through the next years will find out. Before I stop my Before I conclude my report There are just Things that I would like to say Innovation is a good thing because it revolutionizes the world. It makes people living, 
easier. I mean, it makes people's lives easier. Everywhere you go, technology is involved. When you sleep, use an electric fan or an aircon for that matter. When you take a bath, you use a shower or a, or a bathtub with, a, with technological advances. Even refrigerators these days have smart AI. Light switches also. Light switches these days have a voice command have a voice command ability which can be turned on and off when you say on or when you say off provided that provided that there are also sound there are also sound sound reacting devices like a door when you uh, for example there are doors that detect sound waves and can detect whether you are walking close or not depending on the sound waves from your steps that you created it will unlock the door by itself and you can go in innovation cannot be stopped and innovation will continue to evolve through the next 30 50 the next coming years Let's just hope that in times like this, we know, we should know the limitations of the machines. The machines should stay as machines. They should not be given feelings or emotions. They should not be programmed to do such a, like that. Either way, it is safe to say that the world will be, be will be a better place using technology.